opposites, uh, pregnancies and the effects that can have on animal mm. health. So it's a big, <clears throat> big time of the year for health problems with ewes in particular, uh, heavily pregnant ewes. And it is the time where we start to see pregnancy toxemias creeping in, sleepy sickness. As I've said <clears throat> on the program before, very, very difficult condition to effectively treat and much, much easier to prevent the problem happening in the first place. And it's obviously a, a major concern in regards to uh, small enterprises that are relatively confined in what sort of feed they can provide to, to the pregnant ewe. Um, and it should have been sort of budgeted for and, and a plan come up with, uh, with feeding well before now. But um, I guess it's, it, is the, it is the time to make sure that you're not going get, to get caught short. And I guess the end result, that, or that the, 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 the crux of the matter is keeping your, getting your hand on the ewes and, and seeing what sort of condition they're in and making sure that they're, they're maintaining body condition and by inference, making sure there's enough energy getting to the babies. I was just going to say that you know, throwing a bale of hay over the fence is not necessarily... No, it's not. Um, hay, meadow hay generally, it may be an okay maintenance kind of ration, but when we're starting to talk about uh, growing babies, um, it's, not, it's probably not going to do make the grade. So supplemental feeding is um, expensive and important, and if it's needed, it's better off to be planned for well in advance, and if there's is a facility for the home property to uh, conserve feed for these sort of times, then, that, then obviously that should have been thought about before now. But the, the result is that the, the ewe's going to make sure that those babies growing inside her are, are fed in an expense to herself. And so that's where the, where the whole problem arises. And uh, yeah, as I say, it is, it is a bit of a problem that we see in smaller, smaller block holdings where people struggle to, to maintain the right amount of nutrition getting to the pregnant ewe. I guess on a, on a big operation you've got green feed and all that sort of thing, but a small one you haven't got the ground for that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very, I've said before, 10 acre block farms in, in, the, in the Canterbury area. It's or any area. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very difficult undertaking to, to have a breeding, a breeding program um, on small, small land areas. It's, it's really, really difficult. Um, but it's a dream for having little wee lambs <coughs> skipping around the paddock and amongst the daffodils. Yeah, but we also need to. Yeah, it is a it is a nice image that we get, and it's a traditional New Zealand image. But it's it's also important to keep in mind what actually decision making and and uh, management issues go into to running such a such an enterprise, particularly during the winter months where virtually there's, there's zero yeah, growth. Yeah, yeah. exactly.